Hey everybody, Lars here. Uh, time for the second review video for Unit 4, and it's in this video that we talk about something in computer science that people often think is big and bad and scary and difficult, but at the end of the day, it's really not. We're going to talk about recursion. Um, recursion, at the end of the day, is, in, at least in a computer science context, talks about something that refers to itself and that usually sounds a little weird so when I first start talking about this video what I usually do is I run to why aren't they coming up I run to the Wikipedia page and recursion can mean different things and do different things in different contexts usually it refers to being self-referential we see here the Dross Coco can the nun holding the tray with the Dross Coco can. And on there, there's a nun holding the tray. And I'm sure it goes down, 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 down. Okay? Escher, uh, snakes that eat themselves. Escher picture. Where's Escher? I thought they had the Escher picture here. Maybe not. This, I always thought was interesting. It's a culinary version of recursion where this recipe for sourdough requires a piece of the sourdough that was made before it. Um, I don't know how you make the first one, but anyway... Uh, recursion is we're going to look at it in mathematics, Sierpinski's triangle, and computer science. It's the same. It usually refers to something that's self-referential. You can see it talks about functional recursion here and talks about Fibonacci numbers, and we're going to go through kind of some stuff like that. Um, this is the basic story, though. You know me. I always tell you the story about your first year as a computer science student and how your life is made miserable in October by searching and sorting. Well, your life is made miserable in November by recursion. And when you first get taught recursion, and let's bring up some code. Uh, actually, let's just bring up this blank window and we're gonna do some coding in a little bit. Anyway, when you first bring up recursion and talk about it as a technique, and as you're gonna see, we're gonna write a function that refers to itself within the body of the function, um, usually it's in relation to two operations. The first is the Fibonacci sequence. If you don't know what the Fibonacci sequence is, it's one, one, and then the next number in the sequence is the sum of the two before it. So one, one, two, three, five, eight, at 13, and so on down the line. Okay? You can create that sequence easily with recursion. You also do factorial where if you give the number, say 6 or 7, the factorial of that number is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. I mean, that's how things get big fast, if you remember when we talked about big O. Um, but, and this is the thing I always bring up around this time, if you're just a 19-year-old regular Joe or regular Jane, and you're sitting in university learning about computer science, and that was me. I was no great shakes. I had to work. I wasn't a, I wasn't a brainiac. I was a worker. And that may be the first time you're seeing Fibonacci or the first time you're seeing factorial. So then when you're shown how to do it recursively, you say to yourself, oh, yeah, okay, I guess those two go together. I guess recursion is the way to do that. Oh, yeah, I guess recursion is the way to do that. Dum, dum, dum. And you really don't separate the two, okay? So what I like to do when I first tell people about recursion is do it with things you already know how to do, right? So that way, there'll be some contrast, and the contrast will be in the way that you solve the problem, not in the actual operation itself, not in the actual problem itself. So when I talk about recursion, yeah, we're going to look at factorial for a heartbeat, but I like to do recursive solutions to simple things that you know how to do already, like adding and summing and like multiplication. You can see later we're going to do multiplication. That way the contrast is in the way we solve the problem, the recursive way to solve the problem. That way you learn about the recursive method and not just, oh, factorial is neat. You always do it recursively and blah, 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 you know? So what I first do when I first start doing this video, and we're going to code it up real fast, is I'm just going to create a function called my sum. And if the end that I give it is 1, then I return 1. You'll see what this is about in a second. Else, I return n plus, and this is where things get crazy, my sum n minus 1. It's just that simple. OK? 
Okay, so now let's print uh, my sum, and what should we do? 10, we'll do 10. We're not going to trace through all 10, but we can just do that. So now I will save it, I will run it, and we'll get a 55. As you can see, I ran some tests earlier before. Okay? So, you can, let me save that. You can see that there. Let's trace through it and see what we got. As a matter of fact, let's trace through the whole thing with a smaller one. I'll give it a 3. You can see the answer is 6. So, what happens? I say let's play with recursion. I define a function so all of this gets put in memory. Comment, literally the first thing we do is the only thing we do. We run a print function on the call to my sum with three. So what do we do? Is there a function my sum? Yes, there is. Go up there with three is the argument. So n is equal to three. Is n equal to one? No, it's equal to three. So else return three plus my sum of n, which is three minus one, so two. Okay, so I call the function again, only this time n is 2. And I run through things. And as you can see, when we first start talking about recursion, this is where people get confused. Because they have it right in front of them, they think this is their one and only copy of the function. And wait, n was just 3, and now I'm making it a 2, and now this is crummy and confusing. This is where people run into trouble with recursion. And this is completely unnecessary. All you have to do when you see this right here, and we're going to do it in a second, you're going to see. Just get a fresh copy of the function, because that's exactly what's going on in the background in your computer. Every time you call that, you get a fresh copy of the function taken from memory, taken from your program in that little mem memory area where your code is run. Just think of what we did, thought of when we did functions. That little, that little area where things are run, you're just getting a fresh copy, and you're running it fresh every time. So don't people go down the rabbit hole and think, oh, well, if n was just 3, how did it just become 2? And if n, good, 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 good. Don't worry about that. You just get a fresh copy. You're going to see we're going to do it in a second. But it's 3 plus my sum n of 1. So you go through the process again. All right? Is it 1? No, it's 2. So return 2 plus my sum minus 1. So it becomes 1. I call the function again. Is n equal to 1? Yes. So return 1. And if you can see it in your head, this returns a 1, which triggers the next return, which was a 2, which triggers the next return to the 3. So it's 1 plus 2 plus 3, and it ends up returning the entire thing to the original call, which was right there in the print, and you get the answer, which is 6. Okay? So now if we do it for a 5, it just means there's two more recursive calls there, because we went to 4, then to 3, then to 2, then the 1. Okay? And then we added it up and we got our 15. So that's it. It throws people off because it's self-referential. When defining my sum, I'm calling my sum. So it seems a little weird, but it's, I already have the idea out there. So it's not like I'm calling the actual thing. You know what I mean? So now, to just go to the classic computer science thing, if I just take this plus sign, and make it multiplication, and I change sum to fact, then dun da 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 all of a sudden now I have a factorial machine. So if I call my fact of 5, what is that, 120? You get 120, and now you can start doing factorial. All right? And as you can see, because we talked about it, when we talked about big O, once you get big, watch this, factorial 14. Look how big the <laughs> look how big that number is. I can be, and I can make this computer crawl by asking it for like factorial twenty four or factorial twenty five. I'm not going to do it because I'm not interested in shooting this video twenty five times because it'll crash the computer and crash Camtasia and, and things will explode. So, but so I, this is the classic example that computer science students are shown when they first learn about recursion. They're taught how to do factorial. And basically what you're going to learn going forward is when you want to come up with a recursive solution for something, you want to examine it and see if you can find a repeatable task that works on smaller and smaller lists. As you can see with our stack of numbers here, I've taken one away, I've taken one away, I've taken one away. So I'm taking that number and making it smaller each time down the road. All right. I call a function that calls a function that calls a function that calls a function that calls a function. And then when I reach the tail condition, 
In this case, ours is one. When something equals one, then you do what's called go back up the stack. You'll understand what a stack is after unit six. And you go boom, 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 performing that operation at every stage. We performed an addition at every stage. We went five plus four plus three plus two plus one until we got our answer 15 down there, all right? Forget that 14. Never mind the man behind the curtain. I am the great and mighty Oz. There it is, okay? So I'm going to actually, I'm going to change this back because I'm going to probably put this code up on Canvas for you guys. Not my son K, my son. Dun, 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 dun. Always something. Uh, dun, 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 dun. And then we're back in business with our 15, okay? So. That's the way you do a sum, that's the way you do factorial, but we're going to run through one more example. And what I usually do, hopefully it's sitting right here where I grabbed it, yes, is I go through an example with multiplication. So I grab my multiplication code right here, right here, and I'm going to give it three. There's three and four, but I think I'm going to do three and three. So I run this code, and what do I get? I get nine, okay? So let's trace through this code. I say A is the equivalent of my malt 3, 3. So I come up here, my malt num equals 3 times equals 3. So is times equal to 1? No, it's equal to 3. So else, return num, what's num? 3 plus my malt of num 3 times minus 1, which is what? 2. But this time, instead of blah, 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 jumping around, we're going to do things the right way. So with the magic of GIMP, now don't get crazy with me because sometimes I have trouble drawing these letters letters, numbers, okay? Let's come up here and actually trace through what we do when we do recursion. So num is three and times is three, yes? So is times equivalent to one? Of course it's not, it's three. So I come here, else return num, what's num? Num is three. Hoo hoo, that's not so bad. Then I call the function my malt num, which remains three, times minus one. So times was three, so times minus one is two, okay? So now, what do I go up here? No, 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 watch me work. Woo -hoo -hoo. Do, 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 boom, beep, boom, beep. I am now at a fresh copy of the function where num is three and times is two. And that's exactly how it works. Is times equivalent to one? And no, it's not. So return num, which is three, and here, add it to my malt, which is num of num, times minus one, times is two. So here I will make it a one. And now, where do I go from here? To a fresh copy right here, okay? Num is what? Three, because that's when we called it. Times is what? One, right? So, if times is equivalent to one, is it? Yes, it is. Check. I return num, which is what? Three. So the return value from this function right here is a three. Where does that go? Right back up here, where we called it. So this value right here is a three. So now we're ready to return here. Num three plus three is what? It's six. So where are we going to return that six? Da, 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 right up here where we made this call, okay? This comes back now as a six. So what do we return here? Num plus six, which is what? Nine. And where do we return that? We return that to the call because that's where we made the call, three, three. So what do we get? A is equal to nine. When I print A, do we get nine? We do. That's exactly what we got, okay? Now, if I change this to four, which is probably why I was sitting there at four at the original thing, and we rerun, now I get a 12, okay? Because we went through the process one more time. And if we did it here on our chart, which looks crazy now, but you saw what we did, we would just add another call, and we would do my malt one more time, and it would end up being 12. This is how you should think of recursion. 
You're always getting a fresh copy. Don't try to do the math in your mind and say, well, that was a two before, now it's a three, and now it's a that. That's conf You go right down the rabbit hole. You'll make yourself insane. Don't do that. That's not the way you want to think about it. Think about it as getting a fresh copy. And if you think about it as getting a fresh copy every time, you're going to be fine and everything's going to be okay as far as recursion is concerned. I can't even talk. Oh, I am exhausted. Maybe it's because I'm drinking water and not my coffee. i got to go get some coffee. All right. That's it for this video. And this is actually it for the videos for Unit 4. Unit 4 is usually a nice little two-week break in between the big Unit 3 and the big Unit 5, okay? So Unit 4 is just the searching and sorting, the big O, and the recursion. And then you, you play around with some computer science concepts, and then we get to Unit 5 and we do object orientation. You're going to see next unit, we're going to have a three-week unit, and we're going to do three different videos on different object-oriented topics. Right now, though, the recursion, watch the video a few times, wrap your head around it. It's really not that difficult. And then if you look at some of the exercises in the book, you start to realize that as you practice and as you get involved with coding some of these things, you'll see, oh, you can do it this way with recursion and that way with recursion. And later, you're going to learn about storing things in binary trees and solutions coming with those things lend themselves to being recursive and you're going to see how you can save yourself a lot of time and do things efficiently as far as that's concerned all right all right so this was the recursion video you guys be good all right i'm going to get out of here and you have a good night and get ready for unit five because it's coming up soon all right i'll talk to you soon bye